now we're here. So now I'm going to prepare the cylinders and the pistons for installation on the bike. These are our badass Nikasil 124 cylinders. Now when you start using these large cylinders with small skirts, I recommend pulling them upside down or uh, some of them come with like a little base that you can set it onto. They're real fragile and you definitely don't want these to get bent, so I don't turn them right side up until the very end. The first thing I'm going to do is wash these thoroughly, wash the pistons, wash all the rings, wash everything. Then I will take my measurements and that will happen right about... So we got this cylinder all cleaned out and I'm checking the ring gap. We've got the top ring done. Here's the scraper ring. Needs a little bit more work, so the minimum won't go in it. So typically speaking, for a ring gap, you want to use four and a half thousandths of clearance times the bore of the cylinder. So for a four and a quarter inch bore like this, that gives us 19 thousandths for our top ring and 21 thousandths for our scraper ring. And the top ring is all sized up. Now, filing rings is something that if you're not 100% confident in it, I don't recommend doing it because obviously your ring gap and the rings themselves are a super critical component to the motor. So on our, on our compression ring on this cylinder, we've got 19 thousandths, just barely clears. So that's right at the minimum. And another thing that I'd like to talk about with these rings this is a ring off of a Harley 117 and their Mal Pistons and these are the Wiseco rings that Revolution's using in their kits and you can see how much thicker they are. Now there's a lot of technology and a lot of math and calculations that go into ring setups and how they do it and oftentimes with these big bore performance engines you'll see a little bit thicker ring and there's a couple reasons for that. One is the spring strength or the tension that the ring will actually hold against the wall of the cylinder. So this thicker uh, Wiseco ring is going to have more outward pressure which is going to ha have a better seal to help maintain your compression levels and the ring being thicker is going to help with the ring fluttering inside the land. When the piston goes down under great force the ring tends to want to bend up and then when it hits the bottom and turns around, the ring tends to want to bend this way when it goes back up. So the little bit thicker, stronger rings will help prevent that and keep the ring a little bit more flat against the wall of the cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and, and I didn't cover that in the little piston teaser video we did just a few days ago because that was just, that was just for fun and because we wanted to get motherfucking roadie on camera. He's a baller. So when I step my fingers, I'll have these done and we'll install them on the bike. Ah! Oh. The internet's so fast with this 4G nonsense. <laughs> rear ends, the rear cylinder already installed itself, but we were able to intervene before the front cylinder went on. One more thing I like to talk about. These piston jets on the M8s, a little bit different design than they used to be. Whenever I take the top end off of a motorcycle, I just like to make sure that they are torqued to the manufacturer's specifications. And what are those specs? So now we will install the piston on the rod, and that'll happen right. We'll be right back with the heads. The head of power. We've discovered the secret formula. Early on we realized that one head of power is a lot of power. And then we took note and we added one and one and discovered two heads of power is twice the power. 
Though it seems like simple math, it is quite a complex formula. It is one plus one. Common core or any other core, that's two. Two is twice one. So come on down, what are you waiting for? Twice the head, twice the power. Every hour for eight hours. And when I'm done, I'll take a shower. Maybe roll around in some flour. The shower of power rolling in flour every hour on the hour. I remember when we did that boom stage too, and all those guys got mad because they didn't put the caddy or the specs in the video. You know, <laughs> if you're gonna try to watch a YouTube video and do this, <laughs> have a good time. Hey, you know what? I think also, I, I, this is what I do for a living. I don't go to insurance companies and tell them how they should sell insurance. And if I was that interested, I would start selling insurance. But I buy insurance. All right. Cam compartment's done. Crank's in, motor's in, cylinder's piston's on. The heads of power have been installed. One more snap. We'll do one more video that'll do the intake. All the ancillary stuff, the exhaust, the dyno power, and that's it.